Hi, everyone. Welcome to our MySoNet Platinum Digitizing Facebook Workshop. Um, my name is Sonny, and I am really excited to be here with you. Um, I just wanted to go through a couple things with you before we actually get started. Is um, This is being recorded, so do realize that if you have to run out and do something or your internet goes down for some reason or whatever happens, this is going to be recorded. So you will be able to find this and come back if you are interested um, in watching this uh, later. And if you have any questions or if things are um, maybe confusing, you want to repeat or look at it again, you're welcome to do that. Something else to kind of think about is if you're having problems hearing me, go ahead and make sure your speakers are turned up because that should, um, we were doing some testing, so there certainly should be, uh, the sound should be okay. So if, you know, if you are having problems, just make sure you go ahead and turn that up a little bit. So um, if you need to do that. What we're going to do today, let me just tell you a little bit about what we're going to do today, tomorrow, and then on Friday. We've had a lot of people asking us about digitizing and about how to do different things and work with their own background images, making their own designs. And when I was talking with the team, and I have the, the whole Facebook team here with, it, with me today, so Ryan and Meredith and Thomas are all here to help pardon me, help me answer your questions, but also if you're having any other questions, certainly uh, um, you can you know type that in the chat and make sure that you uh, just ask them those questions. But basically, when we were talking about this, this really is a class that I've taught several different times. It's about a three hour class. So we were wondering how to do this. And so what we did is we kind of split this up into three sessions. So today, tomorrow, and on Friday. Today, what we're gonna do is we're really going to talk about digitizing principles. Like if you're a new digitizer, you maybe don't understand or don't even know how to make a good design? What is a good design? What you know? What do you do? And so that's what we're going to start with today. And we're going to talk a little bit, bit about that. I'm going to show you some examples, show you some things that I've done. And then tomorrow we're going to dig into the actual digitizing. That's why if you're here today, maybe you have to be gone tomorrow. That'll be recorded. So you'll have all of these sessions to work with. And then Friday we're going to incorporate the uh, what we create into a project. So that's kind of how this is going to work. So just wanted to let you know that and hopefully you'll enjoy this. So it'll be fun. Give you some uh, good tips and hints. The last thing is, is if you are digitizing, you've digitized for a long time, you know, this, this might be a good refresher for you or what I'm hoping is you'll pick up one or two things. So lots of different things going on for us today with this. Um, I am going to tell you one moment about myself as far as software goes and digitizing. Guys, I actually started now. <laughs> I was thinking about this this morning as I was thinking about what do I want to talk about to start with. I actually started digitizing when software was in DOS digitizing. Oh my gosh, for you guys who actually know what I'm talking about, whole different world today. DOS digitizing was tricky. Today we have such fabulous tools in the MySonet software. So I'm excited to share that with you, but the principles are the same. So that's what it's like if you're an embroiderer, sometimes it's uh, we go back to what we used to do because guess what? That was the beginning and the basis of this. So that's what we're gonna talk about and work with today. So I know that was a lot of talking. Let me get started here. Um, and again, if you have questions, write them in the chat or in the comments, and uh, I will certainly try to get as much information as I can and answer your questions. And if we can't, guess what? We'll get that information to you later. So when I got started, I want to actually read this to you because I wanted, when I was prepping for this, one of the first things I wanted to do was I always love to look up 
Like what is digitizing, right? Some, some of us think it's one thing, some think it's another, but the actual definition of digitizing is to convert something like a picture into a digital form that can be processed by a computer. Well, that's, that's, that's honest to goodness digitizing, but for embroidery, what that means is we're gonna convert a picture into a form that can be stitched out by your embroidery machine. So you, we don't have stitches yet. That's the cool thing about digitizing is we're gonna put our own stitches in the right places at the right time. So I'm gonna start by showing you a couple different things. So let me just come here and actually I'll do this first. So if you all can see, this is not stitches. What this is, is this is just a graphic that I have on my computer. Okay, so it's just a graphic. And now what I wanna do is do this. Because what I always suggest, and you're gonna hear me say this a couple times, but here is that same graphic, right? So here's the same graphic right there um, that I printed out. Okay, so here's my graphic. What I did, this is the fun part, right? So this is the cool part. What I did is I took that graphic and changed it into stitches. Can you all see that? There we go. Hopefully you can see that. So this is the cool part. And this is what makes it special. You're, never, you're not gonna see this design like this anywhere else, but right here with me. Because check that out, it's got all sorts of different fill patterns and it's got, it, it even has what are called Richelieu bars. Those are the lines right in here, right? So those are the lines. So all of that stuff, that is actual digitizing. And I put this, how to show this to you. I put this on a little blouse. It's one of my favorite little summer blouses here. So you can see all of that is that cool looking design. So um, taking a graphic, changing it into stitches. That is what we're gonna be doing the next couple days. Now, um, one of the other cool things is um, that Thomas went ahead and put up a design. Now, in, um, in the invitation or basically the information up on Facebook, we are going to do a little passport cover, right? So something that looks like this, and we're gonna digitize this part here. Guys, I know that some of you maybe aren't wanting to travel right now. Some of you maybe do want to travel right now. What we're doing with this, I'm sorry, I'm backwards on my, uh, on my camera, so I apologize for that. Um, but basically making this little design right here, the little um, signpost, this will teach you a lot about digitizing. It's gonna teach you how to use applique. It's gonna teach you about density of designs. It's gonna teach you about patterns and also running stitches, compensation. We're gonna do all that tomorrow. But basically this is kind of our project. However, we're gonna do a lot of other things. And by the way, we'll talk again a little bit tomorrow, but this was my original, not kind of as nice. I actually, once I got it to the where I wanted it to be, I stitched this out on a faux suede and it's really a nice little project for you. So again, just something to play around with, see how we're going with things. So digitizing, I have always taught that there are some very basic great principles that any digitizer should work with and know. And I'm also an advocate of there isn't one way to do something. Some digitizers, they're like, got to do it this way. It's got to look like this. I don't believe that's true, but there are some things that I think are extremely important to make sure your designs look great, okay? So it is really important that, you know, you kind of follow along. And so again, I just got a little note here from, from the team. Um, we're posting the picture be after, and also this is being, this Facebook Live, it's gonna be posted, so don't worry if you miss a little bit. I know some of you came in a little bit later, so don't worry, we're gonna, it's being recorded, it's gonna be posted. So we'll be good to go after that. All right, so 
I'm going to change real quick here to a different screen. And <laughs> I, um, as this is loading, uh, we're going to do the route signs, the passport cover. This is a three-part series, as I mentioned. But what I want to share with you, and let me make this a little bit, actually, this is fine. You can read this. I, I claim these as my own principles, but these are how I follow what I think about when I digitize. And I really do recommend that you guys think about this too. First thing is, you are the digitizer. And this is kind of what I was saying earlier is there, some people say you've got to do things this way. If you've ever purchased embroidery designs, you know that if you purchase them from the same place, they're going to look similar in the style that they use. So what I, I um, want you guys to start thinking about as you are becoming a digitizer is everybody has their own look. You want to have your own signature, find your own look is what I have, I'm saying here. You're the one that's doing it. You want to be excited about it. So this is what's cool. Let me share with you a couple samples. I am going to go way back so I can show you. This, is, this was one of the first things I ever digitized. But the cool thing is, is I really could start to see when, if you can see that, my little gone fishing guy, all right, and turn him this way. This is one of the very first things I digitized, which I think is really fun. And also, though, when you look in here, and I, I'm going to try and get up close, like you can see maybe his pants a little bit and the shirt and his hair. I want you to look closely at those things because all of those have some sort of texture. And so with that texture, the fun part is, is that's where I started. If you see any of my designs, it's all about texture. It, I love the texture. I love the fill patterns. I'm not great at like um, feathering things in or doing a lot of things like that. What I'm really good at is making it texturized, which I think is really cool. That's my signature look. So I want you to start thinking as you're working and we're working together is what is your look going to be? So let me also explain another little, another little sample here. This is a little quilt piece that I made that just has this design, little Celtic block in the center, right? So a little Celtic block in the center. But when you look at that, I think you guys, you all can see that there's some interesting texture in here as well, which is really interesting because again, in the MySonet software, you have all of these great patterns to choose from. But the other cool thing about that design, so if you see that design, when, when you digitize something, you can take a design like that and look at that. I made it into this little corner block as well. So start thinking about what do you want your designs to look like? How do you want to make them? going to share with you. Some of you, if I know some of you out there, I can't see names, but my feeling is you may have taken a class or two from me in the past. You may have seen my little zebra before. This is to me the, like the cutest little thing right here. But with this little zebra, can you see like in his ear and in all the white areas, there is just, it's like a little wavy fill pattern. It makes your designs more interesting. So I think that's really fun and cool. Um, on the, I point, I'm pointing to my screen, guys. <laughs> um, on the little picture there, it talks about um, this Ohio star. This is, again, a, a really fun thing to try to do is to actually make, if you, any of you are quilters, right? So if any of you are quilters, that's fun to actually digitize your own little design. So of a quilt block, and I'm going to go so far. You're going to see all my sam samples right now. And then as we get going, you won't see quite as many. But here's the Ohio Star block or my Ohio Star um, design, right? With all those great patterns in there, fill patterns. But then 
there's my Ohio Star block. So it kind of makes for a fun little wall hanging, if you can see how that's a fun little wall hanging. And of course, I didn't just let it be, right? So in the center of my Ohio Star, so in the center of my Ohio Star, can you see how I actually did uh, use and quilted through with that little piece? So just fun. Just start thinking about what you can do and how it, how it works. So that's kind of principle number one. The other thing, principle number two, and I will tell you there's about eight of them, so <laughs> get ready, but I'm not gonna take as much time on every single one. But everyone, I want you to start looking at stitch outs, okay? Looking at stitch outs. It says watch stitch outs. Use the design player in your software. Um, whenever I purchase a design or when I create a design, you can see a lot about how it was digitized just by watching the stitch out. So that becomes real important. So let me go ahead and I'm gonna get out of that for just a moment. And I'm gonna come into, now this is, um, as I mentioned earlier, this is in the uh, MySonet Platinum software is where I'm working. The design player though, everyone, is starting from the silver, gold, platinum. Everybody has that in, the, in the, all the different ranges. And I do recommend if you buy a design, just put it in the software, watch how it stitches. And when I say watch how it stitches, let me go ahead, I'm gonna insert a design and I'm just going to insert this little cone flower here and kind of bring that to the middle. It's kind of a simple design everyone but this will show us a lot so I want you to walk through this with me. This is what I do with a lot of designs and you can really know is it going to stitch out well or is it not going to stitch out well by running it through the design player. So again the first principle, get your signet, start thinking about how you want your designs to look. The second one is let's watch and see. So I'm going to come over here. And I hope you can see that. Okay. And I know that Meredith and Thomas and Ryan, they would let me know if you guys are saying, hey, I can't see that or I can't hear or whatever. So um, here's my design in the design player. When I play this, I'm going to stop this a couple times because I want you to look at a few things. This is, again, super important for me to, to do this. I'm going to speed it up, though. Watch what happens, how the design is stitching. Notice, okay, so I'm watching over here, pardon me, but notice what's happening is the design didn't go from like, the top to the bottom, to kind of the top, to over to the left, to down around, it's going in a counterclockwise direction. It would be fine if it was going clockwise, it just, but notice it's going in a nice easy direction. And also notice it's there's a little running stitch up to the top and then it's satin stitching back over to the bottom. And then it moves and running stitch to the top, satin stitch over to the bottom. So I, let's, let's keep playing. And I'll speed it up even a little bit more. Whoa, a little fast. Sorry. I went a little bit too fast. Let me just go back just a little bit. But what, again, what I'm really trying to get us to think about and to look at, and this is going to be part of our planning here, okay? So I'm planning. And this, actually, the design player is in embroidery. So sorry about that. I forgot to say you were supposed to read my mind already. Um, the design player is in the embroidery portion. So it's in the base program that we open in the MySonet embroidery. Okay, so it is in where it is. I, I just have to laugh a little bit. Like I said, you're supposed to read my mind, everyone. I apologize for that. I'll try and be a little bit better here. But up here at the top, there is the quick link bar. And in the quick link bar, over on the right-hand side, this is the design player. It's just got a little arrow in it. And that's what I opened 
and it's going to play whatever's in the work area on the screen. So it's just gonna show me whatever that is. Sorry that I didn't say that. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna continue playing. But here we go. Notice again, the design went to the top. It's working its way back down and speed up just a little bit. So you can see it made its way back down and now it's going around the edge. These little squiggly lines, they're there on purpose. We'll talk about this tomorrow, but what that has to do and what's important with this is that is your underlay. So it's actually going to help hold your fabric nice and flat so the satin stitching won't pull together, it won't tunnel. So I think that's, again, really important. Now, the other thing, as we're looking at this design now, hopefully you can see, and unfortunately, I can't zoom quite in on this for you guys right now. So what I want you to look at, and I'm letting it go a little bit slower, notice how this outline it's not jumping around. That's gonna be another principle, but notice how it goes to the top, back to the bottom, comes around and then goes back down. So it's not going again from top, from bottom to top, to top, to bottom, to mess around. It is going nice. And I'm going to suggest to you all, and I, uh, I just grabbed a pen as I was going along here because Think about having a piece of paper and you have your pen, right? You can't, this is what I want you to think about is you're trying to draw your design, but you can't pick up your pen. That's something to really think about with this because if you pick up your pen, you're gonna get a jump stitch. So how do you do this without picking up your pen? So, that's one of the things about those principles is and how good designs are actually created. So I'm just going to delete this design. I'm going to insert another one. And one of the other pieces, this is such a beautiful design. I love this Cardinal. I think he's uh, I, I am fortunate to have cardinals actually near my home and I watch them, they are just beautiful. But this design is actually digit, digitized beautifully. And why I, I bring him out is when you look, I want you to look at this design and kind of think about, this is gonna come into some of our other principles, but kind of think about how you would attack this, right? So, Again, I'm in embroidery. I brought in my design. I just went up to the uh, quick access bar and went up and did insert. And this is this beautiful uh, cardinal. The first thing, you're gonna stitch out all the black and the back portion of it. Then we're gonna go into the red portion of it. And then, you know, so it's just a work in progress with this. But when I, show this in the design player again, in that quick access bar at the top, you'll notice right here, it's doing all the black. Then, though it did have to jump, it couldn't. This was all one, didn't pick the pin off the paper, right? But to get to this one, I did have to pick, pick my pin up. So that's how you kind of think about it, okay? So that's how you think about it. And then let's keep going. So here we go with more of the black and then the rest of that bottom part. So the rest of that bottom part. Once we get done with that, we're gonna change to our color. And let's keep playing, but I'm not gonna play the next part quite as fast because what I want you to see in the next part is, oh, I'm getting, Click happy here, guys. I, I am uh, trying to look too far ahead, I think. Um, here we go. Why I'm, why I'm saying I'm click happy, I want you to look at this part of the design. This is what is called underlay. And we will, again, talk more about this tomorrow. But when I'm looking at this, look at how the underlay 
is going kind of, I'm going to say east, west, left, right. But when I am uh, starting to see the fill pattern on top, notice it's going north, south. So underlay, and again, we'll talk more, but underlay should go the opposite of what your um, fill pattern is. And again, that's what's that's what you learn when you start looking at digitized designs that are that are really nice. So like, again, this is such a beautiful design. Now, if you don't know what underlay is, don't don't worry. Don't worry, because we will go through that tomorrow. But what it what really underlay is, is this this first little bit that's actually holding the fabric down. So your stitches look really nice. The other thing we'll talk about tomorrow is notice how this the wing of the bird actually went over the body of the bird. I hope maybe I'm going to do one more thing here for you guys. So maybe you can even see it just a little bit better. You don't need to see me see right in this area here how the wing is on top of the body. That is what is called compensation. So by watching this design, a specific design like this, again, that's so beautifully digitized, you see about underlay, you see how they made compensation. I'm gonna talk about that tomorrow. I just want you to notice how this is just beautifully done, right? And so let's go ahead and, well, I think I might've, oh, I, I know what I did. Pardon me, guys. I knew I would do this and it makes me smile every once in a while. I was trying to get over here. My screen, as I'm clicking a little bit, so here we go. My screen, as I'm clicking, I'm looking at you all here and I exited and went into full screen without coming over here to the sides. So uh, I, um, I just, it just was a hazard for me for that for that moment. But see how gorgeous that design really is. And I hope you're really seeing how you can learn so much by actually looking at other designs. So I'm seeing a few comments, that sort of thing. Um, and basically, do you guys have any questions yet before I move on to our next principles? Because I, I know I kind of threw a lot out at you. Um, I see some great reactions, so I think that's exciting. But is there anything that, so Meredith or Thomas or anyone, is there, Ryan, is there anything that, uh, um, that basically you have any, uh, any questions? I see clicking icons, asking a question about what it is in Mac. So I will try to uh, try to um, remind myself to do that. I, I'm so used to working in the PC, but basically the design player is the exact same thing in the Mac version. It's just in a little different spot. So it is the design player as well. In the MySonet version, we really did try to merge those a little bit more. So um, we will, we will um, basically work. I'll tr I'll try to remember really hard for that for you. And then super dense designs. How can you remove some stitches? So, um, guys, when when you're digitizing, so I. I'm going to say this in two ways. And uh, when you are digitizing your own designs, that's where it's really super easy because you set your own density when you do it. And we will work with that. However, if you are working on a design that already has stitches, so like this design already has stitches, there are a couple ways you can re remove or change the density of the design. If you are in the silver software and you are able to just slightly make your, and I'm gonna say scale, scale with white handles, scale with white little handles. And when I mean handles, I mean these little things over here. If you can scale up your design by about 
That will change the density of your design. You're not actually taking away stitches. You're only changing density, which will make it less dense. So that's how I personally do it if I'm okay to make my design a little bit bigger. If um, otherwise, you would actually need to be able to go into some sort of editing, which would be in the gold version. And then there are some uh, tools in the gold version that will help you do that uh, in the editing portion of it. So um, let, let's talk a little bit tomorrow about that. But really, if again, depending upon what version you're in, it will make a difference for that. So anything else, guys, as we go forward? Because I'm just going to go ahead and just go back here to this little presentation and come into this because the next thing that I want to talk about is I actually want to talk about making a plan. This is one of my, my biggest um, advice to any of you that are trying to digitize, okay? or learning to digitize, or have done some digitizing, but want to get better. The plan is the key, everyone. And that's where I, honest to goodness, print out. And that's why I asked, Thomas went ahead, and he's going to post this for you at the end of um, the day today. But this is what we're going to be doing tomorrow. But truly, I print it out. And then I look at this and I say, what am I going to digitize? First, second, third, fourth, fifth, whatever it is. And that's where I'm going to sit here and I'm going to mark. I am really do this every time as I'm like, this is number one. This is number two. This is number three. Can you all see that? So I'm really marking step by step what I'm going to do in what order. If you do that then you're not gonna go haphazardly into your um, digitizing and you're gonna have a nice design. And you really have to think about it a little bit. If I go back and look, think about that cardinal a bit, we did the head, then the body, then the wing, which was on top. So that also goes into our next parts of the principles is work from like back to front Usually that's the first thing you have to think about is what is in the back of your design? What is in the middle and what is in the front? Okay, I think that makes sense to you. So when you're looking at the design, it would have looked funny if I would have done my signpost before I did my, uh, I should say sign before I did my post, right? So I always want to think about that sort of thing. So that is important. The other little piece is this working from inside out. And I put my some of my samples down here on the floor, but I'm going to bring back this, this particular sample. In this design, I could have worked, done my, um, my little triangles on the outside, then the inside triangle, then the square. I could have I could have done it in that order. But in general, when you're looking at something like that, if you guys are quilters, okay, um, if you're looking at the, if you're a quilter, you know you work from the inside out. Same thing with digitizing. So back to front, inside out, and usually you do the largest pieces first. It's just kind of a, um, a thought process, again, that you're going to get in on. Does it work every single time? Not necessarily, but most times it does. So that is uh, that is certainly uh, something that, again, one of those things, make that plan. And I see someone asked if the principles will be posted to copy. I can certainly do that. Um, they're in the, they're right here, but I can certainly uh, work with the Facebook team here and get those posted for you as well. So I'll, I'll make sure to get that done. So this one, number four, if you're, 
if you are taking any notes or if you're not taking notes and when you get this, make a little note to yourself to say number four is one of the keys to having a nicely digitized design. For any of you, if you are a um, embroiderer and you've downloaded a design and all of a sudden it starts going from here to here to here to here, jump stitching all over, right? So you're jump stitching all over everywhere. That is not a nicely digitized design. Remember that first design, actually I, I could go back, but that first little design that was that circle with the little tubes coming out of it, there was not a jump stitch there, not a jump stitch there. Also, let me, now hopefully this time, I'll get to the right place. I also, now I'm going back into embroidery, everybody. So I'm going back into embroidery where our cardinal was, where we were looking at the cardinal. So again, back in embroidery, I'm going to insert. So up on this little, and again, for those of you with Mac, they're the same, they really are the same um, names. They just might be in a little different place. So I'll review that if you're coming back tomorrow. I'll try to review that real quick to make sure I haven't, uh, I names the same. I just wanna make sure I know where they are for you for tomorrow. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna insert. And this time I'm gonna insert this beautiful, I wish I was, I'm not this talented. This is a really beautiful, very interesting design. Everyone, there is not one jump stitch in this design, not one jump stitch. So what that means is whoever digitized this, they had their design and they followed and figured out where to go when they were actually stitching things out. They didn't, that not a jump stitch to be had. So let's go ahead. I'm going to make this super big. And again, back to the design player here. And a design like this fascinates me. Because look at how it starts in the upper left corner. And it works its way around. And it goes kind of to the middle, over to the right, back around. This is so amazing how someone came up with this. I wish I could take credit for it, but I can't. Um, this is just amazing. And when it gets up to the upper right, they fill in down to the lower left. When you look at designs like this in that design player, and you see that there are no jump stitches at all. When there are no jump stitches at all, that's where I am, I am just completely amazed at that. So guys, really think about how you're going to do that. And I also, just a little FYI for any of you, um, for any of you who do stippling, if you do free motion stippling, this is what I teach for free motion stippling as well, is when you, so I'm gonna start here in this corner and I'm stippling and I come down and I make my way around and I come here, all of a sudden I end up here, how do I get to this side without picking up my pen? Same thing in digitizing, how do I go from one place to another without picking up your pen? So I, again, I think that's important for you all to kind of think about as far as limiting jump stitches. Now, I had someone ask, great question on this, why I tend to use insert design. So I'm, I'm up here and I use the insert design versus opening. So versus the open here. All right, so versus open. The reason why I actually like to insert designs is I'm usually working in a hoop and then I'm going to delete what I have and come back. 
open actually will open a whole new page or it will delete what you have on the screen. So let me, let me show you what I'm talking about. I have this on the screen right now. Let's say I wanted to bring in, so I'm gonna go into insert and I'm going to bring in for some reason my cone flower. It will actually bring the flower right on top or into the same screen as whatever I previously had. Okay, so this is where I insert to bring several different things on one screen. But, so let me delete that, go up to File, and this time I'm going to open, my feeling is, there we go. So when I open Coneflower again, and I click Open this time, see it says Save Changes to whatever I was working on. So it's asking me, do I want to save the changes to this? If I say no, it's going to delete what was there and bring it in, bring the design in, in whatever hoop that design was saved. So that is why I usually am doing an insert because insert allows me to put several things on the screen at once, open, will bring whatever design it is solely onto the screen that you have and whatever hoop it was saved in. So I hope that makes sense to you um, for whomever asked that. So, all right. So any other questions, guys? As I'm going to go back to uh, the little principles here. I can tell you all that I am... Um, it took me a while not to kind of learn, but also realize why the difference between open and insert. So really, really great question. Really great question. All right. So let's go ahead to number five. This one gets a little more into detail and you're going to see more about this tomorrow. Everybody is can use connecting stitches between objects. What I mean by that, okay, so single stitches or running stitches or different things like that. What I'm, so I said what I mean by that. Um, here's, um, here's the other, the other thing with the single or running or using connecting stitches between objects. I'm going to come back down. So let me escape again. And so everyone, this is the first time I just, I, I set this up a little bit for us. Okay, so I set this up a little bit for us and that I had my embroidery open. I also have my digitizing program open. So everyone, I am now in the MySonet digitizing. All right, so I'm in the MySonet digitizing. And Meredith, I will answer that question you just put up here in just a moment. Um, so, what you can see, so let me zoom in, or actually, let me just make this full screen so you all can see this. If you look up here in my blue little triangle, so again, digitizing. I did really quick, I just did a really quick little digitizing of two triangles, kind of this, what I, what I use for the Ohio Star. And when I made this, I just had my first little triangle and my second little triangle. Here's the thing that can happen is if you don't, and if this is getting a little too technical, you'll see more about this tomorrow, but I just want you to see this. And this is what I mean is if let's say I want to move this particular point on the right triangle. Okay. So this particular point on the right triangle. What I'm going to do when I move that, look what happens when I let go. My other triangle moved with it, okay? My other triangle moved with it. So basically, if you don't put those little connecting stitches, so look over here, see I have a pattern fill of one and two, there's nothing in between. Let's look at our pink stitches. See how I've got a little pattern, a single stitch and a pattern fill. 
This will make more sense as we go further. But what I want you to do is look at this. I'm going to do the exact same thing, everyone. Okay, I'm going to do the exact same thing, and I'm going to move this. But look what happened here. There's my little connecting stitch. So the first piece didn't move like it did in, um, in the other one. So I need to let me do a quick little zoom out a little bit. So again, if you don't have those connecting stitches and you need to adjust something, it can adjust something that you had worked on or tried to figure out or all that sort of stuff, it can actually move that improperly. So that's what I mean by connecting stitches. And those are single stitches, running stitches. You're gonna see that tomorrow. I just wanted to let you know that's one of my principles because again, many people don't use connecting stitches and then they have to adjust something when they digitize. And, well, ah. and if that's really confusing, um, don't worry, we're going to talk about it more tomorrow, but I just want you to see that's really important. Now, as I'm going to go back to my, um, to my principles here, Meredith had a question from a consumer from one of you guys, and I'm sorry, I don't see your names on the questions. So my, the, the Facebook group is just fabulous in giving me your questions. Um, but basically what they were, what's, someone has asked is actually um, if you have, when you bring in, when you insert a design, like I had brought, had that all those stitches behind that beautiful um, line artwork. And then I brought the cone flower on top. It says, the question was really, will those stitches behind still be there or will they be removed? And in general, when you export a design from the MySonet software, so in general, when you export a design, what will happen is there is a setting, the default setting is that it will remove those background stitches. So it will actually remove it and leave a void. There are some things that uh, it depends a little bit on, guys. So it means if, if it isn't super heavy, it might not remove the stitches behind. If it is a satin stitch on top of a satin stitch, it will remove the, the stitches behind. So there are some things in the background in the software that um, makes does make a difference. But so the answer, the simple answer, I never can make it a simple answer, guys. The simple answer is yes, it will remove stitches underneath. But there are some exceptions to the rule. So hopefully that uh, that helps there. All right, so number six, we'll talk about more connecting stitches tomorrow, but this one, and my guess is that since quite a few of you are on here, maybe someone has asked you at one point in your embroidery lives to, hey, will you digitize my logo? I have, uh, it's, I inevitably, you will get asked, will you digitize my logo? And so this is really important that you realize logos can be tricky to digitize. Whenever I advise someone on how to do a logo, it's basically break apart any complex background, which is usually a logo. And I, I kind of made up this little logo here that says blue flame propane. If you are doing something like this, ignore the lettering first. Like, don't even think that the lettering is there. If you can get like that flame by itself, do that first, digitize that first, and then do the letters. Or if I've seen, you know, working with um, wonderful sewing machine dealerships, you know, sometimes I have a sewing machine and I have letters down here and there people are wanting to digitize that. So do the sewing machine independently of the letters. Almost always with logos, do the letters separately. So um, if you have like a, a, a cabin and a tree and different things like that, 
think of them as individual pieces. You can always bring them back in together. I, and, um, and it will work much better that way. If you try and do it all at once, it usually not only is it a struggle for you, but the program it gets kind of confused too because you're trying to do one thing over the next over the next. So anytime you're looking at any background image, think about it in parts. Okay, so that's what this means is really break apart any any background, but especially logos. So does that help you guys with maybe at least the thought process? Um, sometimes when I do uh, an in-person workshop, I'll have people bring in just, you know, bring in something that you've never digitized that you've wanted to or bring in a logo. And we talk about how to break it apart, how to take the letters out, do only the background image first. OK, so that's also an important piece of our principle is make sure you're you're looking at it. You'll start to look at things differently that way. OK, you really, really will. All right. And then my last little principle here that I'm going to uh, share with you is, guys, there really is more than one way to do something. I want you to look at this little picture here. Okay, so let's look at this little picture here. And actually, I believe I'm going to just go back into the embroidery portion of the software. And up in, again, the quick link bar, I am going to click on change hoop. So I believe for uh, the Mac version, it is also up in this area. Um, there is a little icon that looks like this, and this is your change hoop. Just going to choose to use the 260 by 200 hoop. Maybe if I click there. And so again, at this point, I actually could have went in and opened because I don't have anything else on the screen. So I could have went in and opened and it wouldn't have mattered. I'm just really get used to that insert. So I'm gonna click on insert. And here are those three different designs. And, oh, I guess I even brought it in a bigger hoop when I was uh, messing around with this. So let's do the 360, there we go. So I think you can see this and this way, I can actually zoom in a little bit for us as well. So I'm just gonna zoom in. Everyone, this is the exact same design, or I should say design background as this one and as this one. They all are appliques, so they all have an applique. However, they look very different. So, just because I create an Ohio star one way, that means that you can create it a different way as long as it's a good, nicely digitized design. So again, remembering the limit the jump stitches, use connecting stitches, doing all that sort of thing, that's where it becomes really um, key. But just because I do it one way doesn't mean you have to do it that same way if you would work clockwise versus counterclockwise, whatever it is, that's okay. But just remember, you want it to be digitized well. That's the important part, okay? So I have one more slide. And this last little slide that I'm going to share with you is to me, something that we don't do enough, and that is practice. Every time I do another seminar, working with you all or talking with you all or working with, you know, digitizers or um, other people, you have to practice this. Don't believe that you can wake up. This is what I, I, I always tell people is don't think that I woke up yesterday and said, hey, I can digitize now, <laughs> right? We really need to just practice, learn our skills. That is, is super important. And so 
I tell you that because as we go tomorrow, and again, Thomas is going to post this little picture, right? So we're going to work on this tomorrow. So Thomas is going to post that little picture. Um, this right here was my first little stitch out. And what I figured out is, gosh, that word was too big, too long, I should say, for where I placed it in my design. I did not like this, the serif font that I chose, right? So I tried these different things before I stitched it out and made it more, um, well, more finished. So again, instead of adventure, I said travel. I used a different, uh, a, serif, a sans serif font versus a serif font. Um, the one thing that, there are two things I would do differently on this, and we'll talk about this tomorrow. Someone was asking about density, right? So this, when you're working with small designs, lettering, et cetera, usually you're going to, uh, it's going to be less dense. So the stitches are going to be a little bit further apart. In my case, and I'm true confessions here, right? I took this a little bit too far. I set it at a density of five, which it should have been at four versus five. You learn every time you do something. I still like this a lot. So I'm not going to, I'm not, I have a friend who says I'm not bad about it. So I'm not mad about it, but I would change it if I was going to do it again. So think about that, everyone. It's not one and done. You're going to practice. You're going to work with things. You're going to do different things and try it out. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. So guess what? You're just going to do it again. So um, Thomas and Meredith and Ryan, are there any other questions, comments, anything that I should know before um, we kind of conclude today? And hopefully I'm going to see everybody back tomorrow, same time, same uh, same time, same place, that sort of thing. But is there anything else that um, anyone was questioning about or, or wondering about as we were going through this? I don't, I just quick am looking uh, at some comments as well. So um, I don't. I don't think I don't think there's anything else going on. I'll show you a little bit tomorrow. So again, if you get an if you get an opportunity, you don't have to do this, guys. So if you get an opportunity, you know, print this out. You'll have the opportunity to to uh, to download this, but print it out. Start thinking about how you would digitize it. I already gave you hints, right? So this is how I digitized it: one, two, three, four. And how do I get from number one to number two to number three without having stitching behind? And then do you use a fill pattern? Do you use a um, satin stitch? Do you, you know, that sort of thing. So what are the reasons why we're going to talk about density, underlay, compensation. Tomorrow's class is going to be about the same time. So about an hour. So again, this the three-part series is about a three-hour class that we do. So it's going to be about an hour tomorrow as well. Um, if there is nothing else, everyone, I would thank you for joining me. I love, this is, this is my joy. I love to play around and mess around in the software. So thank you again for all of your um, questions. If you are going to come back tomorrow, Write down any questions you think about it two in the morning when you wake up and go, oh, I should have asked her because uh, certainly you can ask me that tomorrow. And um, if there's nothing else, I think, uh, and I see someone say, what time am I on? I'm at um, Central Daylight Time, so that's where we are. So um, anyway, guys, thank you again very much and have a great rest of your day. Hopefully we'll see you all tomorrow. And again, if not, it will be recorded. So certainly come back and take a, take a look at that. So bye all.